Here's an amazing item for Sega collectors, the Sega Nomad that plays full-size Sega Genesis game cartridges on the go. It has its own screen. This is the portable Sega Genesis. Here, we'll turn it on and play some Truxton. It's got a start button, got the mode button, six buttons so you can play some of the fighting games like Street Fighter 2. Fire that up and I'll get you some better footage of the screen here in a moment, but Look at this, it's Truxton, no matter where you are. Well, if I was concentrating, my game would be better. You can see that the Sega Nomad is kind of a beast. This thing is hardly portable, even though it's billed as being a portable game console. But if you have a gigantic library of Sega Genesis game cartridges, this allows you to play them wherever. If you're lying on the couch, laying in bed, out for lunch, bring the Genesis with you. But don't expect it to last that long if you're playing it with batteries. This thing has a voracious appetite for AA batteries and will eat six of them in about an hour or two if you have the optional battery pack. Now you can also use an AC adapter, which is probably the best way to play this thing if you're just hanging out in the living room and want to kick your feet up and play some Truxton. Here's a close-up look at the buttons on the Nomad. It says Sega right there. Here's the D-pad, one of the best D-pads for any portable game console that I can think of. Very comfortable, thumb fits in there nicely. Mode button, start button, A, B, C, and X, Y, and Z buttons. It's a well-designed system. While it's large and very hefty, it fits into your hands nicely and is comfortable for long periods of gameplay. If you look on the underside, there's the volume control. There's the headphone jack, and you can actually play this on an external display or television. You can plug in a Sega Genesis controller there. There's the brightness control. Battery pack, obviously that's where the game cartridge goes. This works with an AV out plug. It uses the same AV cables as the Sega Genesis Model 2 and the 32X. There's the power switch, and that's where the power supply plugs in. The designers succeeded in making the Nomad a comfortable handheld to play video games on, but it looks like three or four different game consoles slapped together. Like, none of the lines seem to match up or make any sense. It has a sloped top on it that doesn't line up with the screen. It's kind of an odd-looking game console. Perhaps that's part of its charm. If you look on the back, they give you these giant grips. Your fingers slide into place and you can easily reach the buttons. Not everything is perfect with the Nomad, however. For one thing, the speaker is awful. You can barely hear the games, let alone hear any quality out of this speaker. The headphone jack in this model doesn't work all that well either, although it does work. The headphone headphones are the best way to hear anything out of this. The screen is not bad for a mid-1990s LCD screen. It looks a lot like the Sega Game Gear, so it's not nearly as bright as the PSP or the DS or the Game Boy Advance screen. And even if you find one of these in perfect working condition, the screen is a bit washed out. It's hard to see anything if you're outdoors. Let's swap out game cartridges. I'll sadly remove Truxton. Here's where the cartridges go. The cartridge input has a little door there. You can see is your standard Sega Genesis cartridge slot. If you have a large Sega Genesis collection like I do, this is cool because you can play your games or practice your games just laying on the couch if you don't happen to have your Genesis in the same room, which is how I've been playing Strider, practicing up for the review. So you take this and you plug it in, seats nicely into place, I want to make sure you have a good connection, and then you just turn it on. I turned the lights out so that we can see the screen as well as possible. It is slightly washed out, and I think you'll find that with any of these color LCDs from the mid-90s. It's very difficult to find one of these that's bright and vibrant. I don't think they were even all that bright and vibrant back in the day. Controls are exactly the same as the Sega Genesis, and uh, it's pretty much the same game. It's just a very small screen, although sometimes it is harder to actually see what's going on, as you might expect from a smaller game screen like this. In order to reset this, you have to turn the power on and off. There's no reset button. This is a look here at the excellent Thunder Force 2. The Sega Nomad is not a great handheld to take with you if you're going to be on the bus, the train, or 
moving seats on an airplane or around the airport or something because if you bump it or bump the game, your game will stop. You want to uh, play this probably at home, but uh, not outside because you really can't see anything. It's easy enough to see when everything's dark, as you can see here. I mean, ideally, you want to play Thunder Force 2 or Strider on a giant television. Here's a look at Musha on the Sega Nomad. If you're going to buy a Nomad, make sure to buy one from a reputable seller that comes with all of the accessories that you need. Most importantly, the power supply, and you really want a battery pack. Here's a look at Musha gameplay. You can see the colors are not as bright and vibrant as you would probably like. Just ran through something. But, it's still Musha, and you can still take it with you. Yeah, I should also mention that Musha, which is one of my favorite games on the Genesis, is available on the Nintendo Wii Virtual Console. That's the Nomad. It's not just the Game Gear that plays Genesis cartridges, it actually does a bit more. This will function as a full-size Sega Genesis, and even plays two-player games with the extra controller port. But if you have a Genesis library, this is something to consider. Just make sure you get a good one, and uh, don't overspend. Because these are somewhat rare, they can be pricey. Let's plug in Hang On. What you didn't see is the fact that it just took me about six tries to get Hang On to work. This is very particular about how you insert a game cartridge and you really cannot bump the Nomad after you've started a game or else it'll freeze. On the plus side, I'm now playing Hang On nomadically on the go. Looks pretty good too. Sounds like crap. Actually, this is super hang on, but whatever. Hang on! I'll end this review with some Outrun. What could be better for a long road trip than Outrun? Passing breeze, thank you. Don't try to actually play this game while you're driving, though. That would be bad. Let's crash it for fun.